Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about DC motor speed control and pulse width modulation. The DC motor's RPM is directly proportional to the voltage it's supplied with. This is demonstrated in the following example. For example, when supplying 24 volts, it's equal to about 3000 RPM. When you drop it to 12 volts, it's equal to about 1500 RPM. Applying load and stressing the motor will cause its RPM to drop a bit. This effect is increased when using smaller motors. More information regarding this subject can be found in the compensations video. Nowadays motors are almost always controlled with pulse width modulation. This means that the motor's voltage is being switched quickly between the operating voltage and zero. The main benefit of this mode is its excellent energy efficiency. So, how does pulse width modulation actually work? Let's take this one sequence shown in the oscilloscope. As was said before, the motor switches between operating voltage and zero. In this example, the motor is at operating voltage for 40% of the sequence. For the remaining 60% of the sequence, it's at zero. What the motor sees is the average voltage of the sequence. The motor's voltage is proportional to the selected pulse width modulation ratio. The next example will demonstrate this. The motor is being supplied with 30 volts. The pulse width modulation is set to 80%, which means that the motor will be in operating voltage for 80% of one sequence. Now take a look at the top right corner of the oscilloscope's display. This shows the mean value, which is the average voltage of the sequence that the motor sees. In this case, it's about 24 volts. Taking a look at the RPM meter confirms that the motor's RPM is about 3000. This, in turn, confirms that the motor's voltage is at 24 volts since these two values are directly proportional. The same remains true when adjusting the pulse width modulation ratio to 40%. Looking at the average voltage shows it's 12 volts. The RPM meter confirms this by showing that this produces about 1500 RPM. Even though the motor is being controlled with pulse width modulation, it's still able to average the supplied current into direct current, enabling the motor to provide a steady torque despite of the pulse width modulation. The same is displayed in the oscilloscope. The blue line shows current passing through the motor, and as you can see, it's relatively stable. Pulse width modulation control usually operates at a frequency of 2 to 25 kHz. 
Next up, a few things to take into consideration when choosing a pulse width modulation frequency for your application. In high pulse width modulation frequencies, power loss increases and RF emissions also increase. If the motor has an EMC filter, its capacitor might disrupt the motor's function. Removing the filter or applying a lower frequency will fix the problem. Lower frequencies provide better efficiency, but the motor might make some noise. A low inductance motor's current ripple will increase at low frequency and cause it to heat up. This current ripple is displayed with the oscilloscope. Choosing a higher frequency will solve the problem. Electromen control units typically have such a pulse width modulation that its frequency can be selected to match the selected motor and application. The set value for speed can be predeterminately set in the controller or it can be adjusted with an analog signal. The control unit has its own speed scale which can be set as a parameter or by using a trimmer. Those were the basics of how pulse width modulation affects DC motor controlling. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.